Mr. Bumate has been nominated to a California seat on the Ninth Circuit. I appreciate his public service as an assistant U.S. attorney. I believe Mr. Bumate does not have the appellate experience required of those appointed to courts of appeal. Mr. Bumate has only argued twice before any appellate court, state or federal. Furthermore, he identified only 10 appellate briefs, motions, or other filings that he has submitted in his legal career. Notably, three of these filings occurred after the White House had interviewed Mr. Bumate in connection with his present nomination to the Ninth Circuit. Apart from gaps in his experience, I've also concerned about the matters that Mr. Bumate worked on while detailed here in Washington, D.C. in the Justice Department. In response to written questions, Mr. Bumate acknowledged working on the administration's policies of separating families at the border. However, he refused to answer whether he worked on a number of other important matters, just simply refused to answer. Those include the addition of a citizenship question on the 2020 census, the Justice Department's reversal of a policy protecting transgender individuals from discrimination under Title VII, and the appointment of a special counsel to investigate Russian interference in the 2016 election. Mr. Bumate's nomination represents the fourth time this committee is moving to confirm a nominee to the California Ninth Circuit seat over the objections of Senator Harris and myself. I also want to address the nomination of Lawrence Van Dyke <clears throat> to a Nevada seat on the Ninth Circuit. And I'm delighted to see one of the two senators from Nevada here today and just want to welcome her. Thank you for being here. Um, there has been a great deal of attention on the ABA's decision to give Mr. Van Dyke a rating of not qualified. It's rare, actually, for a nominee to receive a not qualified rating. In fact, 97 percent, and this is an interesting statistic, of President Trump's judicial nominees who have been rated by the ABA have received either a qualified or a well-qualified rating. Three percent have not. This remains a very hard, a very high percentage of qualified endorsements. At Mr. Van Dyke's hearing, members of this committee criticized the ABA. Senator Whitehouse has set some of that straight. And the evaluator who led Mr. Van Dyke's rating process accusing her of bias against Mr. Van Dyke. But in fact, that evaluator had recommended a qualified rating. I should point that out. Mm -hmm. The members of the ABA's standing committee disagreed with that qualified recommendation and rated him not qualified. Now, each member of this committee is free to decide how much weight to give to the ABA's rating, if any. But criticism of this evaluator are unfair and unwarranted. Among the reasons for the ABA's not qualified rating of Mr. Van Dyke is his troubling record when it comes to LGBT rights. In a 2004 op-ed, Mr. Van Dyke wrote, and I quote, many studies raise concerns about gay parenting, end quote. And quote, there is ample reason for concern that same-sex marriage will hurt families and consequently, children and society, end quote. It's the Harvard Law Record, 2004. In fact, studies show that the children of gay and lesbian parents do well as, ch as children raised in opposite-sex households. In written questions, I gave Mr. Van Dyke an opportunity to disavow his unsupported statements about gay parents. He did not do so. Mr. Van Dyke's record on gun control is similarly problematic. While running for a seat on the Mon Montana Supreme Court in 2014, Mr. Van Dyke filled out an NRA questionnaire that makes clear his views on gun control are far outside the mainstream. And I'd like to enter that questionnaire into the record, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. 
On the questionnaire, Mr. Van Dyke checked answer boxes supporting the following um, areas. Gun control laws are misdirected. I oppose banning the manufacture, possession, ownership, purchase, sale, and RR transfer of any firearm. In addition, Mr. Van Dyke indicated he opposed legislation requiring background checks for all guns sold at gun shows and opposed a ban on assault weapons. Mr. Van Dyke's defense of his response to this questionnaire is that he answered the questionnaire as if he were a legislative candidate, even though he was seeking judicial office when he answered these questions. No one forced him to answer this questionnaire or to adopt these extreme positions. I pose the very same questions from his questionnaire to Mr. Van Dyke in written questions. I was disappointed that he was willing to answer these questions for the NRA in 2014, but he refused to answer them when I asked these questions in his hearing. I finally want to note that Mr. Van Dyke's lack of Nevada ties was a key factor in the decision of Nevada's senators to oppose his nomination. So I think, Mr. Chairman, you know, you have the senators from two of the states in the Ninth Circuit um, opposing this man, very troubled by the record.